it takes one player and the league is shut down. The Stanley Cup being awarded this year is up in the air. If we were putting odds on it, the odds would not be good. Guys, the wave's coming. I don't know how extreme it's going to be, but it's coming. And it's going to be more than two weeks. Thank you for continuing to tune into the show. It means a lot to us. It really does. We're going to sort out whatever kinks we have with today's episode. It'll get better and better and better. It's our first remote. <gasps> there he is. Ah! There he is. <laughs> he's, he's awake. Not a, he's not a plastic doll. For just a millisecond of time, we're actually realizing the people that actually make the society run. The Maude Aubrey, George Floyd, Breonna Taylor. The whole stick to sports thing is just such utter crap. It's important to tell these stories right now because people are listening. A 24-team play. Playoff format. Toronto versus Columbus. Winner plays the one team. The teams that make it are Toronto, Florida, the Rangers, and Montreal. The teams that make it are Toronto, Toronto, Toronto. They suck. How do you n- not score a fucking goal? They suck. Which Halloween candy box is the best? Ugh. Six is a Number lot. Seven. We ate 24 combined hot dogs. <sighs> Haley, if you're anything like me, you like to close your eyes and pretend like everything's going to be fine and there's going to be a season. Do you remember saying Benino Benino? <laughs> yeah, Jad, I'm hoping. welcome to the show. I'm a horrible fighter and I hate fighting. I don't know who the hell this person is that now works at home. Why don't those greedy bastards get back to work? Sheldon Keefe spent a whole training camp in January trying to change the mindset of his team. When is it just part of their DNA that they're chokers? They lost. Again. Again. And now we're never going to hear the end of this. All right, we'll see you in three weeks. You know, Oz, really you so much. We'll see you August 31st. Have a fantastic rest of your summer. And when we come back, it's back to business. Jesse Blake. Let's go! Let's go! Hey! I love it. Back in studio for the first time uh. since March the 15th, 2020. That's a full 17 months. Which, in retrospect, we shouldn't have even been in the studio that day. No, it's funny, eh? <laughs> like, no, probably you know, not. You know, no. we were we kind of went through, um, and and Jesse and I kind of talked about this before. We initially were gonna we wanted to sort of surprise you with the idea, but um, I, I had to send a couple clips through about just some of the weirdness that was happening on the March fifteenth and the March eleventh episodes. Oh. Because March eleventh, we did a show in studio, and. We didn't have any idea of, like, maybe this happens. Maybe we got an issue. Maybe not. And then all of a sudden after that, um, you know, like, we are back in the studio on March 15th. And I'm like, that is four full days later. Oh, the yeah. leagues were canceled March 11th, right? It was Rudy Gobert that night, NBA wasn't it? NBA was that day. NHL was, it was the next day. Yeah. On my birthday. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and you know what's great is going through and reading all the YouTube comments. And I actually want to pull them up because oh. some of them are so... Funny, I, 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 so the first one is, um, how does absolute mayhem always happen after they record a podcast? So that's after the March 11th episode, by the way. It's that, uh, I went to Sportsnet later that day, like through all the shut up, uh, shut down and everything. And I, and I watched it back and all the things you said that were so prophetic. They, they happened six hours later. You're like yeah. one player gets it. And Rudy Gobert got, bef- but I think before the episode was up. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, it was it was wild. And then uh, this is all the best. They canceled all sports for Steve's birthday. Thanks, Steve. Now you're I'm ruining sorry. everyone else's life. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, and, uh, another one. And literally the next day they shut down the entirely because the NHL waited till later. Yeah. Um, and at, some guy named uh, not some guy Adam Richmond wrote, "Dude, sorry they canned the season on your birthday." <laughs> and then happy birthday, Steve from Les. Uh, for your birthday, the NHL is canceled. And then uh, Blues and Cards Nation said, I would cancel the regular season and resume in Jalo- in June or July with the postseason. Very close. Oh. Pretty damn close, Very right? Very close. And that's like, I mean, I have to say, I'm, I, nobody knew. Nobody knew at that point. And I remember the whole two weeks to flatten the curve thing mm-hmm. or oh, whatever. Yeah. Uh, nobody knew where this was going. So it's very, very cool that this is the position that we're in. Obviously, I, 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 I mean, the elephant in the room is the room that we're in. We're in our very first, <laughs> yep. uh, our own studio, SDPN studio. We yeah. we, we own it. We, we sound it. different to the people listening, and we look different to the people watching. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And actually, it was uh, full full marks to Jesse for putting this whole thing together. He kind of it was his vision. And no, uh, no, the <laughs> all the credit goes to the Steve Dangle because of the TV stands. 
Oh, the TV okay, staff. So we need to talk about how this are studio the came most together. important part of this studio because it took oh. Steve alone what three hours to make two TV stands. The first one took a long time. I said it was like writing a book. By the time I had written one, I knew how to write one. But writing one was impossible. That was these TV stands. The second one was okay. The first one, I'm like, I don't know. You, you guys are just like happily doing what were whatever. You like? I don't know. <laughs> I was like, you guys were no. You're putting together these like these easy tables. IKEA oh, easy tables. tables. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I can look you in the eyes and tell you that. <laughs> it's nice to be in your presence. It together. is. Yeah. Steve gave me can a. Can we big, hold hands? Yeah, we yeah. can. Yes, we, we can. can. Hold yes. <laughs> No, we, we we Steve and I hugged upstairs, and he just said, "I'm really excited, man." And I'd say it's it's crazy, like you know, and even watching that montage back, Jesse, because I sent some clips along, but Jesse went and like went deep into some of those episodes. I, I love, wasn't expecting that. I love the retrospective; it was amazing. And mm -hmm. I I think you know you realize like first off, all the people that made time for us oh, and yeah. Reed and Edge and um you know Haley who, who always makes time, Tim and Sid who I think we were their last. I was talking to Sid last week, and I think we were their last official interview together as a you know when that show was still on like that that's kind of cool and like you know, those guys were always so good to us and then um you know uh, with all the people that made time for us over the pandemic like mm -hmm. really all the other people in hockey and not in hockey it's it's pretty spectacular and then of course you know you who are listening to this <laughs> you think about like i remember that day leaving on march 15th and thinking like what are we gonna do like what are we gonna talk about and that that was a real test. That was really intimidating. There's a clip in there that I that I left on the editing room floor where you said that we should all become Twitch streamers. And it kind of became true because we <laughs> yeah. did start a Twitch streamer. You account. are now. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then uh, Steve, you predicted that everybody would be on there. And you're like, Stephen Brunt, he's going to be up there being like, hey, I'm playing Fortnite and I'm Stephen Brunt. <laughs> <laughs> here's, an, here's an essay about sports and Fortnite. I, I, I encourage everybody to go back and watch that March 11th and March 15th. Can we link to that? In yeah, the yeah. We'll put that in the description because it's... It's crazy to watch. I and watched we, the last night. Yeah. The 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 March 11 one is ridiculous because we're just talking about the world normally. Mm -hmm. And like I was talking, oh man, Mike Green, he's really going to make that Oilers power play formidable. And he played like two games for them. <laughs> maybe three. I like. Ooh. And and uh, and then there was just this abrupt moment where we're like, but all right. this could all be over tomorrow. We were wrong. It was over that day. <laughs> That frigging day. Yeah. And Every I remember, I remember when we planned out the show, you know, <laughs> one of the things with the show sometimes is we do, we do don't, we don't always love to lead with bad news unless it's the top story. Right. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's not because it's less important, but we have the metrics to show that the majority of people that listen to this podcast, listen all the way through. And that's the crazy part about this is like, you know, coming from a background in radio where the average time spent listening is somewhere in their neighborhood of like five to seven minutes, and that's considered good. Um, this podcast is in like the 45 minutes or something like that at a time. Yeah, we're way above. It's crazy. Yeah. And and so, you know, you know that you're going to get to these topics and people are going to hear them. And if they miss them, we're going to clip them and put them back on YouTube anyway, so you're going to hear them. But I, I, I remember specifically saying, let's at least talk hockey, mm -hmm. and then we'll talk COVID because we don't really know anything and we're not sure – but it's sort of the the elephant in the room as we were described it at the time, and like I love the the last part of that intro there of the the intro before we get into the montage where you say a wave is coming and it's gonna be more than two weeks because we all thought it would be two weeks. Two weeks. We thought we flatten the curve, don't overwhelm the hospitals. Two weeks later, we'll be out of this. And you were like, "No, you guys, something this thing is growing around the world, and we're gonna be in it for a while." And what is it? A year and a half later, we're still in it. Well, and I remember after that show, people calling us like hysterical liberals and like, yeah. <laughs> like you guys are nuts. You're, this, this will never happen. And like, and, and, uh, you know, again, I don't think anybody could have predicted this. I, I wish of all the incorrect takes I could have had, I wish I was wrong about that one. Yeah. You know, I really do. Like, the one thing you nailed. <laughs> I did not want to be right on that, but you know, that's, that's where, you know, that's, it was the numbers at the time, the infection rate at the time, how contagious it was. Like we didn't, I, I, it would have been hard to believe. I remember the Atlantic or, or something or, or the Economist, one of those two like, you know, li liberal hoity-toity magazines that everybody like shish kebobbed released an, uh, an article like a week before and said se something to, in the neighborhood of like 70% of people are going to get this. Mm -hmm. 
and wow. and everybody was like, I don't know what the hell they're talking about. They're, they're they're fucking crazy. Like, there's no way. And not that that is necessarily played out, but I think that that was under the auspices of you'll you'll probably get it if we don't do anything. Right, and right. and so you know the effect that it has had and just the mindset we were in like I was and nobody knew it at the time like on that March 11th and March 15th episode I watched those with a different lens on because you know you know my my ex and I had just broken up like 10 weeks before that I left out your divorce out of the montage oh thank yeah. you. So, I don't know is that a bad thing a good thing I'm, but it didn't make it it sounds weird but it, it like it, you, you if anybody's been, you know, you've been through a bad breakup, you know what I'm talking about. You, you are, you're still very raw after that. So I can, I, I hear that Oof. and I, and I feel myself back in that spot and I go, God, I'm so glad Oh, I know we've progressed. We're not there anymore. Thank God. I know three different people who were going through divorces and just simply had to live together. Yeah. They just, they well, just had to live together. We had to do that. It's, oh my God. And it, Leo is a newborn. I know. Yeah. That kid wind sprints around my house now. Like that. Oh my God. How old was Leo in that clip? Three days old? Maybe two. Two, <laughs> two or three. Wow. Two or three. Yeah. You say yeah. he's not a plastic doll because that's what he looked like. And everybody thought it was a joke. How sleepy <laughs> were you in that clip? Can you remember that? Uh, Do you remember that show? No. I no, don't, I, I don't uh, remember anything else discussed. No. That, that, um... That that playoff, you know how I'm like ridiculous with my hockey stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Leafs played the Blue Jackets. Um, Tampa won the cup. It was against the Stars. That's it. I liked. Uh, I liked. Steve's, That's it. Steve's predictions there. It's like the teams that are going to get through: Toronto, Montreal, Florida, <laughs> and it's like wrong, wrong, wrong. Like, zero, zero, zero. <laughs> Montreal did. <laughs> Montreal did. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there were there was yeah, that you know we, was fun. we've had it's been one heck of a ride, and I think um, I just want to say thank you for hanging in there with us with you know figuring out the remote system. It's a little bit weird to be in the studio, mm -hmm. and I, and I I remember that first episode where we did it. Um, the blue background in my room was an air mattress. <laughs> so if you go back and you watch those episodes, that's an air mattress to try to dampen the sound. Like I tried, I was covering everything in, in cause I had just a big empty room. Right. Yeah. And we broadcasted Virgin radio mm -hmm. out of that room as well. Mm -hmm. Cause we did that show. We took it out of the studio and then everybody would come over at like five 30 in the morning or five in the morning. And we'd, we'd all have coffee. And then we would, we sat at like a plastic table, socially and distant. Two weeks later, we realized this is a terrible idea. Yeah, we're in a small room together. This is pr probably bad. So then we all went home. Yeah. But then I was alone, divorced, living with my ex, and and like you know a, a baby that was less than a year old, and like oh. and then and and you're in that room, and it's fucking COVID. Like it was terror. It was a rough go. So that that I remember that blue mattress because I was like, this is the only thing that's worked for me today is that I was able to dampen the sound in the room a little bit, and we were able to kind of figure out a rhythm. <laughs> Being not in the same room. Yeah. And we're going to continue working on this room, by the way. We're not oh, yeah. done. Oh, but, yeah. No. But uh, it's literally the first day. Hey, please give a, be, yeah. Please, you, be patient. You, you build yeah. a damn studio, right? <laughs> it's, 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 I, know, I read the comment section before it's up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> all right? You're already fighting with people I online. <laughs> <laughs> Stick to what you know, which is imaginary fights with imaginary people. Real fights with imaginary people. Oh, That's what God. I have. Uh, I, uh, yeah, just, the... what do you remember about that time guys? Cause I, I think it's a, like, you know, going back to that, think about like, what were you feeling in your gut, in your stomach? Like what those last episodes at, in the studio, first episodes at home? Uh, well, I do remember, and, and, you know, this is a, a change in attitude that, you, you know, I, I don't fault. I remember like we had to have a discussion, like kind of a, like a harumphy discussion. Like guys, we this is our last show in studio together for a while. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we still like had not really grasped that. Um, I, re I remember on March 15th, I remember the drive home. Um, you do, eh? I, I do. I remember the drive home and just, I felt like I was in a zombie movie. No one was there. I'm driving home downtown Toronto, five o'clock rush hour, nightmare <laughs> home in 45 minutes wow. <laughs> or like 50 years. Yeah. It was no one, no one was there. I got so good at Chell. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> I got so good. Oh, amazing. And then Leo was born and I got so bad. Um, I just, well, that was the, the thing, the all consuming thing for me was just Leo. It was just waiting, waiting for him, mm -hmm. making sure my wife was taken care of, 
making sure she was comfortable. Um, you know, we, like everybody, started to feel like the isolation of being away from our parents. And she wanted to see her mom more, obviously. And uh, we did like, we, we were still doing like patio, like, hi, like waving, waving yeah. from the walkway. You came to see me on my birthday. I was I alone did. on my birthday and Steve, because, because again, my ex had moved out and, mm-hmm. and so I was alone and Steve and Sarah Louise came down and, oh. and, uh, said hi. And we and did you a pat- seem very upset. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, I mean, I, I'm not a huge birthday person anyway. I'm really not, uh, not as low on the birthday scale as Jesse, who will not even mention it. No, um, I'm not a, I'm not a big birthday. I'm person. not a, I'm not huge on it. Either. I love my birthday. <laughs> I think, I think generally though, like you're, if you're going through that, you're going through that. And then the pandemic on top. And it was like, a, it's a great shitty April day. Like, it, was it was a right. shitty day. I, I remember it's like, you know, Millhouse's dad, when he's like, I sleep in a Ferrari bed. That was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You seem you seem very upset. I, I also remember, Jesse, uh-huh. you at work or when you came over to my place, there was a, a day when you said, okay, I got the microphones that we're going to use for the studio uh, or for the, for our remote setups. You got to drive drive one of them down to Steve. <laughs> yes. And I drove it down to Steve on the Don Valley Parkway and a guy rolled down his window and said, hey, somebody wrote something on the back of your truck. Mm-hmm. And you guys remember this? And then I said, what is it? And he's like, cock. <laughs> and there's just a big, dirty cock. There's the a clip on our YouTube channel of you telling that story on the podcast that you can just search up. Just, Stephen Adam's trip on the highway, I think it's called, or something like that. Man, that was funny. And yeah. Jesse, we're like, because you had, you had to manage two things. You had to manage a remote setup for Virgin Radio and live is a whole lot different than recorded. Right. Like a lot of people don't realize how much different and 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 frankly how tricky it is to do live remotely because you're sending the signal to the radio station which then sends it to the CN Tower mm-hmm. which then sends it out to the world, right? It's not easy. So you had to manage that and then you had to manage the two of us. Yeah, as well. from like a personal perspective at first at the beginning part of the pandemic I was terrified because my dad lives alone and my sister lives alone and they're just being isolated for God knows how long. And from that, I was just like, okay, I don't know when we're going to be in, in this uh, for how long. But like I was talking to them all the time. I was like, okay, I hope my dad doesn't get sick because this could destroy him. And I don't know. And then my sister, she's just going to be hanging out alone. Right. But from a work perspective, the pandemic has been like the best thing ever for me. Because at the beginning of it, when uh, we stopped broadcasting from your house, I got to sleep in a little and wake up right before the show, which was awesome. Yeah, I did that too. It was but great. <laughs> just the uh, the not the things that forced me to learn are the reason why we have this studio right now. It's like I I the first month we were at your place, I learned how to take the entire show, our three hour radio show, mm-hmm. and broadcast it live to Instagram, Twitter, YouTube simultaneously. That was something I didn't know two weeks before that March 11th date. And I learned um, a remote TriCaster setup. And then I learned how to live stream on Twitch and and build all these other elements just in the digital space so our product looks crisp. And if you, if you watch that little montage, you'll see there's a little bit of an evolution of just the graphics on top of of our Zoom calls. And it used to just be our Zoom that we'd throw up on YouTube. And then I was forced to be like, okay, how do I make this look nice? How do I how do I turn this this terrible Zoom call into something that people actually want to watch? So like I'm super thankful because the pandemic forced me to learn all of these new skills that I'm still using today to build the studio and why we're here right now. So he's the guy. Yeah, he's the he's, guy. You know how everyone's like, I'm gonna learn during all that? He's the one. He's the guy. He actually turned his life around. He's the yeah. one. <laughs> well, not that he was going in the wrong direction. No, I was I was homeless yeah. and I was a drug addict and you know? <laughs> But you leveled up, right? Like I tried. Yeah. Like, I'm all, now I'm now I got this mentality of be like, okay, I know I can learn these things and like, okay, I'm gonna it doesn't build, scare you. I'm gonna build this website. I'm like, I got this idea. I'm gonna learn how to do all these things online and it's it's been a lot of fun. We, he's like my wife. He's, he's, yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's like SL. We're, I was, uh, oh, I'm gonna make this. I'm like, you know how to make that? Nope. I'll learn. I'm just yeah. gonna, yeah. And you Je- just do it. Jesse, it Jesse is like that, and I think you know, I don't, I don't think we give enough credit to, um, the evolution of this podcast with Jesse. Like, you know, obviously found, you know, with full re- full respect to Chris and and what he did for us in the first eighteen months because he was here for about that much. After that, you not know, Chris Johnston. No, not Chris Johnston. Chris, the original producer. Got us off the ground, right? And and then, you know, I knew Jesse and he was a quiet intern at KISS. And he really was. Like, Jesse was the quietest fucking guy I've ever met in my life. It took me four years to get to know him. 
And uh, but but the thing was is that I remember Jesse talking to me about how to make the radio show better because our big struggle at at, at Kiss was you know we we have it we had a big morning show and we were the afternoon show and we're trying to fit in and, and look good and that sort of thing and Jesse started talking about well you know he we, started talking yeah he started back then <laughs> he was talking this is 2015 I hate this entire conversation this, and this it is, needs to stop this is pre talking Jesse right that, that first breakfast when you're like oh I got this guy and I was afterward I was like oh boy <laughs> oh what <laughs> How dare you? You didn't, didn't say know words. You I didn't, didn't say know words. <laughs> well, you have to say words. <laughs> and we spent months trying to get you to say words, and now you say words. There, I think the first six months of the podcast, you might have said a sentence. Like, you didn't talk. Man, it was crazy. It wasn't my role. It wasn't it was, I was the producer. So, so Making sure the audio was good. So he starts talking about... <laughs> And this is, a, this is an important thing in the evolution of the show. We never get the chance to do this, by the way. There's not a lot of hockey news. We can talk about Cock and Yemi and Drew and some stuff happening. That's but like Thursday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like there is not a whole lot happening right now. So we're, I'm gonna take, we're going to take this moment be gratuitous. You, you should know this story. So Jesse, Jesse <laughs> that, says. No, after this, we're telling the story of the podcast starting. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're going all the stories. Yeah. Let's go. That's so, what story we're doing. time, baby. Yeah. So, so, and because it's nice to be back together. I've seen yeah. you guys, I've seen Steve five times in the last 18 months. It's ridiculous. Like that. It's so, so Jesse starts saying, you know, Breakfast Club out of New York, which is the hip hop morning show, spectacular morning show, Charlemagne the God, DJ Envy. Um, it's, it's such a great show. Angela Yee. Angela Yee. Mm-hmm. Can't forget Angela. They started years and years and years ago building a YouTube channel around just their brand, not um, not with like the radio station separately. And I think they've got five or six million subscribers now. But, you know, they were famous for posting these like one hour long interviews with people like like some of the best interviews have come out of there, like the Soldier Boy thing, which became a meme, like Drake and the, you know, Kanye West and like Charlamagne yeah. looking, him, looking him in the face and going, that last album was whack. Like it was not good. Um, and then there was the, what's the one? Put some respect on my name. A Birdman. Birdman. Bird, yes. Yeah. yeah. Like, and so Jesse said, what if we started recording segments on, on the Blake and Wild show? And we at that time had a camera set up, but because the morning show wasn't happy with it, we weren't allowed to use it. Yeah, That's the, actually the story. The guy who ran it wouldn't teach me. Yeah. And the guy that ran it. So, so that had nothing to do with the morning show. So the morning show wasn't happy with the angles on it, which I don't, I don't blame them at all because the angles suck. They, they were, were t- in the sky. Yeah, so they, they had the cameras hanging from the ceiling, and the ceiling's like 15 feet in the air. So you're, we, have a, we have a clip with Sean Mendez, and we could talk about that, where literally mm-hmm. all you could see is like my brow and the tip of my nose. That's you, want, all. you want bragging rights? Adam Wilde sat with Sean Mendez in a studio. The first time he ever heard a song played on radio, Adam played it for him. Wow. We didn't know that either. It was it, Life of the Party. And Blake and I were interviewing him live, and he's just some kid from Pickering at this point, <laughs> right? right? Yeah. And, went, like, and he was super nice. Like, he came in. He was a great guy, was, was so talkative and so cool. And then, so we were, ch- we were chatting as we play his song. He's like, hang on, hang on, hang on. And, and he puts the headphones on, and we're like, Blake and I are like, what's going on here? <laughs> and, then, uh, and then we play another song, because you usually talk and then play a couple songs and then talk. And he takes the headphones. He goes, guys, I'm sorry to be rude. Uh, he said, but that was the first time I ever heard my song on the radio. And and wow. and then so we came out of the break. We came out of the next song and and talked about that. And Blake literally, she said on the aisle, I'll never forget it. She was like, I I just got chills like thinking about that, right? And it's so we had that. So these and you can go back and I think you can still find that clip on the Kiss YouTube channel because yeah. it's a good one. Um, the 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 colors all off. There's no white balance on the camera. And Jesse's like, we need to start recording these Blake takes, Blake's takes. But of course, the promotions head at that time. Who I believe is still there refused to, to so, teach Jesse how to use the TriCaster. We, we don't need a name. Well, I'm not naming his name, but he was. <laughs> he, it was a ridiculous move. Anyway, Jesse's like K- Kiss is a uh, chorus. Incident, <laughs> right? is Listen, I'm not. There's nothing against Kiss. We had a great time there, but but this particular the way <laughs> things were going was not exactly right. 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 So Jesse and I um, eventually get tired of it, and I owned an, a Nikon camera, and I think mm-hmm. you did too. And we and I I remember Jesse started bringing it in to the backup studio on the fifth floor where we used to do that podcast. So the original studio, if you if you remember that show, Steve and I would be sitting across from each other, and then Jesse would be on the side, and um, and that's where our first episode was done. That studio no longer exists, 
and yeah. um, it's a sales like, sales floor floor yeah, yeah it's completely really? gone yeah, they tore down oh. they tore all the the walls down everything it was it was not a great studio everything was broken but it is what it is and then um and then Jesse started recording like 10 minutes of the show and then started a YouTube channel for us mm-hmm. and and then started doing 20 minutes and then i remember he would have to get up every half an hour to reset the camera yeah because uh with international laws you can't have a video uh, a camera record over 30 minutes else it'll be considered a video camera and you have to then pay higher taxes so uh camera companies they only allow their cameras to record up to 29 uh in like 50 minutes how, how are we doing on these i'm just gonna say <laughs> it's not we- there? No, it's not twenty. Uh, it's not twenty sixteen anymore. Oh, so they, did they modernize those laws? Yeah, no, they didn't. But we have a different system. Ah, do we have a workaround? Yes. Okay. And we are recording. So, <laughs> so that started happening, and then and Jesse. So all the stuff that we learned from the podcast, we experimented here, brought it to Kiss, and then we and again, then when they built us a new studio, they didn't install any camera equipment, which didn't bother anybody but Jesse and I. So I went out and bought eleven hundred dollar lights. Um, I remember that. And which we still use to this day. That's what's lighting our studio them, right yeah. now. And then, um, and I think probably our cameras are still, I don't even know if they're the same No, ones. these are different cameras. These are different ones. Yeah, yeah. But the the end of the day, um, Jesse started recording it, recording me there. And it was all stuff that he learned while doing this podcast. And, you know, I, I look back now and look at some of those old episodes. And literally, there's like a... Like every time Jesse had to reset the camera, he, he there'd be a, like a black square that would yeah. come up on the YouTube and be like, had to reset the camera. Sorry. And then like it would. Because it wasn't only the camera time limits on the recording, it was the batteries too. Oh, I yes. Didn't, I didn't have a way to plug in the cameras until I learned how to well, do that like a year ago. And I like watching the podcast on YouTube. So I'd be in the middle of an impassioned like, <laughs> if this keeps up, they're going to miss the plan. And Jesse gets up from his chair and just walks. <laughs> yeah. I, I did it at the beginning. If you're watching this, I did it at the beginning here because I'm still figuring out the kinks of the studio and I forgot to set that camera uh, that's on you, you, Steve. So you won't have a camera for this yeah. episode. But oh, wow, wow. Uh, yeah, this, we're still going through all that. But yeah. It's all that is to place. say, were it not for you and were it not for Jesse and all the work that he's put in and especially in the last year, the production quality is just, it's broadcast quality. It's amazing. Were it not for Jesse, we would not be here. And it would not be, you know, and I can say that for any member of this show, but frankly, on on this level, looking like this, reaching this many people, Jesse, Jesse brought it. It was Jesse that did that, all of that. And this studio, every piece of everything that you see, Jesse sourced. And he just told us what to do. We showed up here, and Jesse's like, "Here's a bag full of shit." Um, and, <laughs> yep. and 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 you guys even, approved of the stuff. <laughs> yeah, we got. well, I mean that like, brand, we, that's a business expense for I mean, sure. But <laughs> you, I mean, approve is very loose. Yeah, like, yeah. what are we gonna say? That's no, that's you gave me that tech. list. Uh, mm, this, this seems like a good mic. <laughs> <laughs> when you talk into it, it records you. It does. Yes. I was just like Jesse. Can, us, can wow. you get us the mics that all the other podcasts use? Right. Like the because I felt I was a little jealous of all of them. But like, You're like they is, have it, I want one. This is all you. This well, is all what you did. It's it's a combination of the three of us because I think my role on the show is to handle the production aspects of right. it, right? So, and your job is to handle the hosting. And we can go through uh, the evolution of how hosting got better if we want to do that. No, but, but I think it'll be awkward as this is for me. And Steve, your job is to be Stephen Yell. You're, you're and some, your yeah. Stephen Yelling has gotten a lot better over the Holy years. Holy shit, is it ever? <laughs> I think so. Well, Adam, you know, if, if it weren't for you, we would not be here. Jesse and I don't live here. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so, this is my basement. Yeah, so we can right. f- proudly la- say <laughs> we have graduated from my mother's basement, where we did also do this podcast, yes. to officially my <laughs> basement. Steve Simmons. Steve Simmons came to my mom's fucking basement and did it in my bedroom. The, the podcast. You did uh, it with. Oh, hmm? no. We didn't just, yeah. Isn't that crazy? Put that one in the sun. David Alter Whoa. did that too. He came on. Yep. Uh, and he did that multiple times. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dave, Dave Alter was, I think, our one of our first guests. Yeah. Um, we didn't have too many guests in your mom's basement. <laughs> shockingly. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's nice to at least say, like, we, we graduated. We, we, this is our space. We're able to do this. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, technically, it's not my space. I don't own this house, but uh, we rent it. Um, but it's, you know, it's, you know, we have this space and it's ours now. Because, I mean, we were in the, the Bell Media backup studio there. I hated that studio. It was, I have to tell you, that move, the, the hardest thing about leaving Rogers was those little backup studios that they had just built, like where we did, oh. the, you know, the clip with the front foot. 
Mm-hmm. Um, the, I was the, so the fan sad. studio with the beautiful oh, backdrop. Yeah, absolutely. The most, the best studio we ever worked in until this one was that yep. fan studio. It was amazing. And you and, guys are like, "Oh, I'm leaving." I'm like, mm-hmm. "Yeah, I know, <laughs> right? I know." Mm-hmm. And there's certain times where, like, I'll go back and watch the episode and go, "Like, man, we were like right beside each other. It was great. Mm-hmm. Those were fun, fun days." And it was, you know, the Leafs were on the upswing, and I, I, I just remember switching over and going to the Bell Media Studios, which just don't look good. Frankly, they look like crap. But they weren't meant to be shot, right? right? They were built 15 years ago. And they when, let us use them for free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, like everything, I have to tell you, when we, uh, when you watch those episodes, that studio is barely holding itself together. Oh, like, yeah. Like they fixed it up now, but it's a, uh, it's, it was like, we were lucky if we could hear what the computer, if we were playing computer audio, mm-hmm. we were lucky if we could hear it. Yep. It was just, it was impossible. So now... Yeah. Jesse, so there's some capabilities in this studio yeah. that are going to be completely different. So, like, if you're watching this show, what can you – and watching and listening, what can you expect to be kind of new and improved about this? Because there's a, there's a lot of kind of special moves that this studio has that – I think would surprise people. Yeah, it's going to be uh, an evolution, obviously. Like, we'll add add on features as we go along on, I guess, we're calling this season one, mm-hmm. you know. But you'll be able to see, you'll be able to see guests, like, on, on screen, in behind us, on over on Zoom. We'll be able to have anybody virtually into the studio. Anything we're playing, like, if we're referencing an article live on screen, we'll be able to have that overlaid on top of us, so anything we're talking about. So, and you won't have to go b- back through that e- later and edit no, it in I got, like you used to I got have my to. laptop right in front of me if you're watching, and like I can beam anything from my laptop onto the screen for you guys. I can throw it on the corner, anything like that, you know, and then we'll add funky graphics in post, you know? Yeah. It'll and, be fun. And we'll get to practice our first guest next show. Are we, do you, are, are we do doing you want to announce? Yeah, do you want to do the announce? The hockey guy. Hey! hey! We listened. We yeah. listened. We've been hearing... Time and time and time again, you got to have him on. You got to have him on. So the hockey guy is going to join us. He's going to join us remotely. Um, mm-hmm. So that'll be our first test of the remote side of the studio. Because right. believe it or not, beside me, when when especially, and we think the first guy who should sit here is Chris Johnston. 100%. Has to be, right? Yeah. yeah. So so there is another microphone here. Yeah. There, when we zoom back a little, you'll both see there's a fourth seat. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So we're actually able, and, and we probably, like I could probably move over a little bit if we needed to have two people. Oh, yeah. Right? That, that's been another trippy thing about all this. I have not seen him. We've grown closer as friends, me and Chris, mm-hmm. than we've ever been. I have not seen him in person, I don't think, since this all began. When did I see him? I, there, we were at Sportsnet the same day for that. It's on for, for that thing. I don't, I don't think we saw each other. Me and Merrick went, hey, wait, wait. And then he just <laughs> walked away and had to do his thing. Ailish Forfar, I co-hosted a show with her. I've, I've never actually met her in person. Really? Yep. Wow. Never actually met her in um, person. It's, uh, it's so strange. Jesse, Jesse, I know Jesse and Chris ran into each other at one point, but that was that was about it. Right? Yeah, yeah. We uh, we saw each other, I think, in like January-ish. Okay. Around there, yeah. Yeah. But that, was, that was it. It was one time. Wow. Yeah. Just uh, just to wrap on all the production stuff, mm-hmm. I just want to say, like, I also enjoy doing all of that. Like, when you guys task me with, okay, source all this stuff for the studio, I'm like, oh, fuck, yeah. Like, I get to go home and have fun. And, like, <laughs> and like learning learning a new program. I'm like, okay, now I get to start from zero again and dive deep and then become an expert at this. And then I learn all of that stuff. And I'm like, okay, I know that one. Now I get to learn another program. So, like, all that stuff is fun for me. So I just want Sounds to say like my personal not... hell, but I'm glad for you. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> like Steve, you were, I could not do that. You asked me the other day because you wanted to also stream on Twitch for a little because we started a Twitch channel that anybody who hasn't watched uh, since, I guess, our last podcast. We have a, a twitch.tv slash SDPN live. We go live there. I'm doing every Friday right now. And you asked me like, hey, hey, can I get a similar setup to you? And I was like, okay, it requires this, this, and this, and this. And you said, fuck. And you were, <laughs> and you were out. <laughs> I, no, I, I think I need to do that. But it's just amazing to me that you're so good at all this. You're so good at learning. And you're so bad at GTA Five. You're so... Oh, Jesse, I've been watching those streams and just go, drive beside the boat! <laughs> beside... Listen to Franklin! He is telling you what to do! Shoot! Franklin, he's dangling off the side of the boat! Now you gotta get Jimmy! Oh my well, god. Well, that's because I played sports video games for yeah. the last 20 years of my life, and I decided to pick up GTA for the first time in 
15 years. I think that so. makes it interesting. It right. I like that. It right. does. Yeah, a complete <laughs> fucking rookie who's never played any I of the GTA suck. games. <laughs> oh. They're so much fun, though. Aren't yeah. they a riot? It's a good... The storyline oh. right now, I, I'm just, like, at the beginning of oh, where... Oh, it's so good. Where Michael's, like, um, he's, he's doing some stuff, and then... So I'm just getting into, oh, like, yeah. the actual story. So it's a lot of fun. The, um, the other game you got to do... Uh, same company as Red Dead Redemption. Mm-hmm. That's it's, what everybody's saying. It's well, two, number one is actually really good, but I think it's for yep. PS3, so I'm not sure if there's a cross console with that. But uh, number two is is a prequel to number one, oh. and it's spectacular. But sixty hours the oh, campaign. Yeah. The, the campaign is about sixty. hours. <laughs> and if you don't get sidetracked, that's if you don't get sidetracked. Because mm-hmm. there's like I remember like there's a part in it where you're in literally in New New Orleans, right? Because it's all the American Midwest and yep. and, and Southwest. And um, if you're going through at night, you'll like come across somebody who's being hung from a tree and then like you get attacked by people because it's supposed to be like a decoy, right? That's outside San Denis. Yeah. Yeah. The, the night folk. Yeah. And San Denis, which is like New Orleans, right? So, and then there's the, um, uh, the Jesse, I guess you have another personal announcement that you would like to make console wise, right? Oh. Well, yes, uh, I did. I did become a proud owner of a PS Five. Yeah! Whoa! Yeah. And what's what game are you gonna buy? I think uh, just for for you and me, Adam, Steve, you can go back to Oshawa or something <laughs> because you are not a PS Five owner. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna hit up uh, maybe Amazon and find a little steering wheel. And I'm going to download F1 2021, and Adam and I are going to race. It is a spectacular game. It is so good. And the great thing is, Jesse, we can race each other, mm-hmm. or we can do a season on the same team. No way. Yeah, do a whole season. We sign up for a team, and then we can like work our way up. We can do career mode together. Oh, my God. What? Shake and, shake yeah. and bake. Oh, yeah. We can, and we do it online? It like, yeah. we doesn't have to be in the same household or anything? No, we don't have to be in the same household. The, the whole thing is Let's we do, do it that. Online. Cooperative, right? <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, pretty cool. I get to be uh, Lewis Hamilton or you can Daniel be, or Ricardo. You can, or you can just be you. No. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Screw that. Screw that. No, no, no. No, screw that. Um, it's a. Uh, uh, it's pretty cool. It's it's a and it's a fun game. Like I started a, just a career mode, and you start in F two, so mm-hmm. you have to race like, and you're racing guys who are now in F one, but in F two, like kind of like when you're in the minors in in NHL, right? Same thing. And you've got a, and then there's like a whole story mode that's separate of that. Kind of like with the NBA, because it's all EA, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like with you know with the NBA and the and NFL and stuff and and FIFA, they all have their own story modes. So there's a story mode where you're a super young guy, and then you're on a team with an older guy, and like you're sort of the up and coming, and he's sort of falling off, and then you get it from his perspective, and then chapter two is you get it from the old guy's perspective, and you like so you feel like fuck this old guy, and then you're like, and then you get some background in him, and you're like I love this man. And like, and it's like the weird shit happens. Like it drops you into a race at lap 13 and it's like, it's raining and you're in 12th and you need to finish in the points, which is top 10. And you know, you're 12 seconds behind catch up. And it's just, that's fun. Yeah. It's oh, really yeah, cool. Yeah. It's a really, especially if you like uh, F1, it's a spectacularly done game. Like really F1 for a long, long time has deserved a great video game. You got it with this one. It's so good. It's so so good. And if you're into F1, if you haven't watched the series yet, I encourage you to. Uh, if you're if you're not into F1, watch that series and then get into it because man, what a great sport! Drive it's, to Survive on Netflix. Yeah, have you yeah, seen it? Great. Yeah, I finished so you it did uh, wa- over the over this little break. Yeah, I had it great. on. So you did while watch I was doing it. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Good. That's why that's why I want to play the game now. Amazing. It's a great show. You need to watch that show, Steve. Yeah. I know. We're uh, we're we just finished season one of Ted Lasso. I've heard that's Which amazing. Too. Everyone is strangling each other over. That's it's been nice to have a little social media break a little bit. Is uh, <laughs> is Ted Lasso? Yeah. Is it is it funny that. as they say? I really enjoyed it. Okay. Is that enough? Sure. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. You're not. No. What no. is what is See, happening? Why, he doesn't have a take. That's the problem. Steve right now is is going. I really enjoyed it without saying it's the best show. It's my top five show. Here's my top five shows of all time. Or no, everybody's wrong and it's fucking terrible. Yeah, that's usually what you have to say, what, right? What? Well, uh, it was it was so ironic to me to be halfway through the first season of this happy go lucky, genuinely pure and fun show, and see people fight about it. Why are they fighting about it? I whether it's the best thing ever or the worst thing ever, and I'm like, I know. How are, it's impossible to fight over that show. It's like fighting over Thomas the Tank Engine. Like wow. it's yeah, no. I mean, it's is it impossible on Twitter? It's no. It's not. We're two. We're four. We're six. We're bullshit, Thomas. None of <laughs> none of us like you. You blue piece of garbage. Like it's. I, I just I couldn't imagine that. And just Mitch Marner trending every single Yo, day. Yo, that has to stop. It's that gotta has to stop. stop, guys. Holy shit. 
It's got to stop for him. It's got to stop for you. Leave Mitch alone. Mm -hmm. 2021. (laughs) Chill. (laughs) (laughs) Leave Mitch alone. 2021. I, I hammer him when he deserves it. I, it is August 31st. He's done nothing to you. Right. Exactly. And like, didn't he get engaged or something, or that was alluded to? Yeah. Oh, well, this is the only way he's gonna get a ring. But fuck, stop like, being an asshole. Leave the guy alone. Like it's enough. It is. It is enough. And yeah. and it, it that goes for Leaf fans and non Leaf fans too. Like just chill. I know he he was a target and he had a bad playoff. But guys, it was a bad seven game stretch. Sean Couturier. We were upset too. I, you could go back and look up oh, the yeah. clips. Oh yeah. But like but enough. Sean Couturier gets signed. Well. Mitch. <laughs> we now go live to Mitch because the Flyers signed a person. I actually like, saw the the uh, when Cocky Niemi's offer sheet came in. Well, people are like, "Wow, is Cocky Niemi half Mitch Marner? I think he's way more." Like it was like that's not the, the scale. What's going on here? What's wrong with you? And these are Habs fans. No prompting. Just let's bring up Mitch Marner. Just yep. And so I, I mean, listen, we were hard on him, but we're hard on his play on the ice. Not hard when on, it happened. Yeah, not hard on the guy for two months after and taking personal attacks at him. That's the part that it's like, okay, guys, chill. Like, relax. And and you know what? The next time, you know, when we get a full 82-game season, which we're going to get in a month and a half, mm-hmm. and he goes out and he scores 110 points, you're all going to be like, I was. I always believed in you, Mitch. Yo, Leafs' first preseason game, I'm pretty sure, is 25 days away. Wow. Nice. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Check out betterhelp.com slash SDP. Now, we all know life is full of stressors, and it really doesn't matter who you are or what you have. Your life is probably stressful. It can be your boss. It can be your friends. It can be your family. really doesn't matter. You don't have to be down and out and depressed or feeling like everything's at a total loss. But if your stress is high, and you're finding your temper's a bit shorter than usual, or maybe you're starting to feel the strain of your relationships, you can probably use the chance to unload and unload that stress, get it out, talk it out and talk to somebody who's unbiased about your life. Somebody who isn't going to judge you. Better help is customized for just that. It's online therapy that offers video phone and live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to have anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's also much more affordable than in-person therapy. And you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours, unload the stressors and get some unbiased feedback. You'd be pretty surprised what you might gain from it. See if it's for you. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and SDP listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash SDP. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash SDP. There's a lot of reasons why you might be losing sleep. Is it uh, the fact that there's an election in Canada right now? Or if you're in the States, is it the fact that you just got over an election and that was pretty exhausting? Is it the pandemic? Is it your love life? Is it drama that that you just can't control? Whatever it is, trust me, I've been there. I know what it's like not to get a great sleep. We know what it's like not to get a great sleep. And Helix wants to help you out with that. So Helix is, is really interesting because they've got a quiz. It takes two minutes to complete, and it matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. So you know why would you buy a mattress for somebody else that's made for somebody else? With Helix, you're going to get a mattress that you know will be perfect for the way you sleep. Everybody's unique, and Helix knows that. So they have several different mattress models for you to choose from. Soft, medium, firm mattresses that are great for cooling you down, which is something I need because I'm a sweaty boy. And Helix Plus for people who are plus-size sleepers. I took the Helix quiz. I was matched with a mattress that, like I told you, helped me cool down. And I sleep on my face. I know that's really bad for you. And if you're a chiropractor and you're listening, I'm sorry. But that's just how I get my best sleep. And Helix matched me with a mattress that helps me with that. It's been awesome seeing all the unboxing Helix videos too. You should check out some of those online. If you're looking for a mattress, just go to helixsleep.com slash SDP. Take their two-minute sleep quiz. It's super easy, and they're going to match you with the mattress for you so that you can get the best sleep of your life. And Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders plus two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash SDP. That's helixsleep.com slash SDP for up to $200 off and two free pillows. As the world opens back up, we want to get out and we want to look our best. And there is nothing that feels better than a suit that looks spectacular on you. The right outfit can bring out something special in all of us. Is it confidence in getting that deal done? Is it great for a date? 
This is something Indochino can help you with. They create your best look and it's way more affordable than you think. Let's talk about this. Indochino offers completely custom fitted suits, shirts, casual wear, and it's all surprisingly at affordable prices. Every piece is made to your exact measurements and you can customize every detail. Choose everything about your suit from the fabric, lapel, monogram, statement linings, and create a suit that fits you and your style perfectly. The best part is Indochino suits start at just $3.99 with all customizations included. Indochino is now open at select Nordstrom stores, giving you even more ways to get great fitting, personalized clothing. Find your nearest location at Indochino.com. And right now you can get $50 off your purchase of $3.99 or more by using the code SDP at checkout. That's $50 off a purchase of $399 or more at INDOCHINO.com, promo code SDP. You know, it's been a long, tough couple of years, hasn't it? You deserve some rest. You deserve some relaxation. You deserve comfort. Fall into comfort and make it a top priority this season. And who's more of an expert about that than Brooklyn? It's time to save big and invest in your comfort during Brooklinen's Labor Day sale. It's happening now. Brooklinen makes beautiful, high-quality bedding and everything you need to make a house a home. Brooklinen makes bedding for every kind of sleeper, whether you sleep hot like I do or cold like my girlfriend does or somewhere in the middle. They got you covered. And it doesn't stop there. If your bedroom is all set, make every day a spa day with a choice selection of excellent absorbent towels available in a number of colors. Brooklinen has over 80,000 five-star reviews and counting, and there's a reason for that. Freshen up your fall with Brooklinen and your one-stop shop for comfort. You can shop the Labor Day Savings event now for savings on all things comfort. And if you can't decide right now, you can invest your comfort with the promo code SDP anytime. That's brooklinen.com, promo code SDP for 20 bucks off. Check it out. brooklinen.com, promo code SDP. Sign up today with BetMGM, the exclusive betting partner of The Athletic, and get a $1,000 risk-free bet plus a free three-month subscription to The Athletic. Just sign up at betmgm.com slash twopod, T-W-O-P-O-D, and take advantage of this special offer from the king of sportsbooks. That's betmgm.com slash twopod, T-W-O-P-O-D, new customer offer, paid a bonus dollars. Visit betmgm.com for terms and conditions. Must be 21 years of age or older to wager. Colorado, Indiana, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Nevada, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, or West Virginia only. Excludes Michigan disassociated persons. Please gamble responsibly. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700 in Colorado, Nevada, and Virginia. 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help in Michigan. 1-800-GAMBLER in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia. And 1-800-BETS-OFF in Iowa. In Tennessee, call or text the red line at 800-889-9789. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem and wants help, call 1-800-9WITH-IT in Indiana. Promotional offer not available in Nevada. Attention listeners across the galaxy all the way from australia to houston do we have a pube problem well if so our friends at manscaped have cleared you for takeoff with their fourth generation and brand new lawnmower 4.0 kick your pubes to the next planet with their performance package 4.0 the orbits in your pants will feel like they're in zero gravity when you use the best tool for the job for the leaders in male grooming Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped to get that rocket in your pocket ready for takeoff and go to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping with the code DANGLE, D-A-N-G-L-E. Inside your package, you'll find the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, weed whacker ear and nose hair trimmer, crop preserver ball deodorant, crop reviver toner, performance boxer briefs, and a travel bag to hold the whole solar system. The fourth generation trimmer also features cutting edge ceramic blades to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. The Lawnmower 4.0 has a 7,000 RPM motor, a new multifunction on off switch that can engage, an LED light, and of course, it's waterproof. And that's really important. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code DANGLE at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code DANGLE, D A N G L E, at manscaped.com. For the clean Trinity and beyond, your space balls will thank you. Before we move to hockey, you guys owe, owe me a story. And the listeners. Oh, okay. All right. What's the, sto- the story again? The evolution, the start of this podcast. Oh, you want to know how it all started? It predates me. I got to know. I think you know the story. I do know. Okay. <laughs> uh, but the listeners got to know. We, I mean, we could go all the way back to 2005, I believe it was. No, it was wow. 2004 or five. Yeah. Trade, this is a trade tree. This, yes. <laughs> this is a trade tree. So now we start. <laughs> um, uh, in math class, which Adam and I were equally inept at. <laughs> hey, man, it's that's 
thankfully we've been partners in in, in Eptitude for our whole careers. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. That's great. And uh, we were talking in class, and we were like, "Oh, I remember last spring when the Leafs won a playoff series." And, oh man, that was crazy. And you were like, "One, I I don't remember how the conversation began." We and, were well because we were always talking. We were always talking. Justin Fisher was like right there. We oh, sat in kind Justin. of an L. Yep. And you're like, one day you and I are going to have a sports show together. And then we fast forward nine years ish. Mm -hmm. and Probably. You, so this is where you have to pick up the story because you and Chris had spoken about it uh, separate from me. Right. So that the story picks up in 2013. Um, and we were at, and weirdly, Steve wasn't there. We're at a, sh a shitty bar in, in Scarborough. And I say shitty as a compliment. They want it to be. It's a dive bar in Scarborough called Amigos. And why is there a bar in Toronto or in Scarborough called Amigos? You were Amigos with Chris and not me? Yeah. Yeah. We were with Derek. With our friend Derek. How did... You what? Were, you were working at CBC for Hockey Night in Canada. Oh, okay. Right. So we were there one night and I had just launched uh, the Cash and Wild show with Kiss. And I looked over at Chris and I had been watching some of Steve's content. And if you're a longtime Steve fan, um, you'll remember some of this. But if you're not... If you if you come on in the last five years, you don't realize how many fits and starts there were to Steve's career. Like it all looks now like it was meant to be, but there were so many things that Steve tried and frankly just didn't work out. And 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 they were learning experiences, but there were things you did a million different things. You were working for the Leafs, you were working yep. for the Marlies, you were reporting on things, you were doing videos for for the Leafs used to have their own platform and their own social media. Can you imagine that? They should have hung on to that. That was a mistake to let that go. On YouTube? Leaf Space. I, oh, Leaf Space. Yeah, I, they should have. They should have yes. held on to that because they had all these fans who were like there and engaging with you and Clayton Hansler, right? Yeah, um, and Monica Platek. My, my, Monica, that's right. Yeah. And so these guys were like miniature stars already in um, in that Leaf Space community. And Brooke Pashley, I think, was a part of that too. There was like a yep. whole thing. Yep. And then, you know, Steve tried multiple times to start a podcast. There was like... Um, there was one where you guys were in a bar and it looked like it was shot like an episode of Seinfeld. Like it must have been the most, <laughs> it's better production value then than we have now. It, right now, it was yeah. no. And that was a friend of mine, Derek Ryder, who, uh, he owns his own production company now. Like, like he's got like a hundred employees. Yeah. He's doing, he's done amazing. It, it's an amazing piece. He's, he's doing so well, but, but he was trying to tell me how many or how, how much money, it was going to take per show and how he was going to sell it. And I was just, I was not thinking that big at all at that time because I was not that big. And, and Derek is a big thinker. He's, he's, he's a big picture guy. And, and just, he's brilliant, but it was me and Jeff Fayette and Thomas Trance. I don't even Thomas Trance. Yeah. I don't even remember what we discussed. Oh, and I wanted like a burger and there was a guy in the kitchen. Like, I walked into the kitchen to be like, hey, like, I know you guys are only sort of half open. Can I get some? Aiden? It was a guy we went to high school with. Oh, that's funny. Who, like, ended up, he won, a, he won a Juno as a drummer. Yeah, as a drummer for a heavy metal band. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, it and it just, I thought it was good. It just didn't work. Well, and I think, um, and full full respect to Derek, because it, it's a beautiful, amazing piece, and he's done extremely well since. I think the cost, Look at Steve... That. Steve told me, and this is, you got to remember what podcasting was, right? It's not the $100 million Joe Rogan contract. You know, this was, um, this was back when, and this was several years before. I remember the headline and I remember sending it to Jesse and Steve. And it said, in the United States, podcasting is officially a $100 million business. And that's 2014 or 2015. That was the headline from like Forbes. Man. Now Joe Rogan just signed for a hundred million dollars on his own. On his right? Own. You consider how big. It, so this is before all that, and I think the cost per episode for this particular piece was five thousand dollars. And that is for what I did. For what you were doing with. Oh, with, I think it was more like. Than look that. at this. Look at how beautiful this is. It looks. It looks. It's gore. It's beautifully it's lit. Cinema. Yeah, I mean, it's a great idea. There's Steve. Look at how young Steve is. And of course, he's wearing his free ho his free Olympics jacket. Free, free jacket, free sweater. Yep. Wow, wow. Sideburns. And it's a bar in Ossington, too. Wow. This is pretty... I mean, it's it's pretty Tall cool. Tall boys. And, and you're, what was with the sideburns, though? I, just, I was just stupid. I just... <laughs> 
I just, just didn't take care silence. of my hair. I just didn't <laughs> take care of uh, so my head. Uh, so you know, you look at at this situation here, and and, and you know, I mean, look at how look at it's so <laughs> beautifully shot, and that that's at Tall Boys. I think we've done live podcasts there, haven't we? Uh, or we were we, offered, it, we were going to do one should. in the pandemic hit or I, something. I think you're right. Oh my god. Like there's there's so many there's so many ideas and there's another free there's again the Canada that's the Olympic sweater that Steve was given so he wore the Olympic jacket and then the Olympics wasn't that Nike that one's World Junior that's World Junior okay that one's World Junior I missed that sweater dearly <laughs> it was it was very comfortable I remember that sweater you could read through it when Steve when it was almost done like you, you it know was so there. <laughs> Steve wore it till the last thread oh, baby you know what's great <laughs> having a Nike deal. You know what's sad? When you lose your Nike deal. <laughs> and you have no money. God, I would really like that deal back. So so, um, so then, yeah, so all of these things that happened. And I remember talking to Chris. Um, Sorry, what quick thing. Yeah. You're going to find this very funny. I can't wait. Tell me. So uh, financially, uh, so I cannot say how much uh, comp Nike gave me. Okay. In the store. But remember the, it was like the Young and Bloor Nike store. Yes. So I got a comp to that store. And they um, they they had to like make some sort of special exception for me because I bought like I bought an unbelievable amount of clothes mm-hmm. for me. Okay, for me it was an unbelievable amount of clothes. But they were like, yeah, typically people don't use their comp more than once. They just they spend it t- till it's maxed out and they go. But like I, w- I, I made it last like six trips. <laughs> <laughs> well, you wanted to make sure that you would you have updated clothes for the season. Because even I was like I was looking at stuff, That's even though so it funny. was it was Nike store money. It was money I could only spend at the Nike store, and I'm looking at a jacket like. Whew, expensive <laughs> <laughs> you're like i gotta wait till it goes on sale yeah. oh yeah. god it's the most you thing what? ever where are your socks like i bought socks <laughs> and he bought stuff for his family too like you bought friends and family stuff. i hooked everybody up i got i got like 20 30 different friends uh, world junior t-shirts that year and they didn't even medal and, and then, oh that was the bad year yeah that yeah, was yeah. the yeah yeah oh, one of the bad years um so no it, 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 to fast forward I'm at this bar called Amigos, and I looked at Chris, and uh, and I said, "Listen, I got this weird idea." And I said, "I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure if it's anything or not." But I said, "I keep seeing," and this is after several beers, so imagine a little bit of slurring too. Um, I keep seeing Steve do these podcasts, and um, the problem is that he's the host, and Steve is not a host. And I said, "So if we could." What if you and I went to him and said, let's do a show, but just let Steve be Steve. And 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 I said, I could be like the James Duthie and he can be like the Bob McKenzie. And I said, I realize that he's not Bob McKenzie and I'm not James Duthie. And I realize that what Steve does is not what Bob McKenzie does, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But the reality is, is the build of a good show is you have a, a lead host who sets up a big personality and, and, um, and you have, or you have a couple hosts like we do now that are all kind of, we all kind of work in concert. But the, the setup of that show back then was, you and I, me setting you up, Chris jumping in occasionally. And that's what it was for Jesse for, for years as well. Now now that's just different, right? Because yeah. we're all so bonded. Right. Um, <laughs> you know, it's different. That's a good way to put it. But that's bonded. what it... No it, more, it, no more hubbly. It, it graduated into that, right? <laughs> that, that could be a t-shirt. Oh, no. <laughs> so, and that's ooh. all it says. So we went to the much uh, like him at the time. So uh, thank you, Adam, for not letting Steve follow go down that path. No, and no, actually convinced him to keep me on. Well, no, <laughs> no. Hold I on. trusted my friend uh-huh. and was like, I mean, he's smart. He's I'm sure That's there's all he's something. got going. I'm sure this. I mean, he wouldn't tell me he's smart. <laughs> And if he did, it would just be, um, I'm smart. <laughs> you wouldn't have said, Jesse would never pump his own tires. No, you're Even right. Even now. But, but what I, but when, it, anyway, long story short, what happened was we, so we get into this. I, I, I say to, I, I text Steve and I say, Hey man, um, have this idea. Uh, can we go for, for beers and like lunch the next week? And it was Jack Astor's on front street. I'll never forget. It was like 11 AM. Steve walks in and he's just a sunshiny boy. He just he just got rosy cheeks and he's a happy boy and that you know summer's coming in we're in the third round of the playoffs the Leafs have just lost their first game seven against the Boston Bruins so we pitched this idea to him and he goes okay I think it was a Saturday actually and then the next day I'm pretty sure we walked into the studio and recorded 
or it was the next week. It was really quick. Yeah, I think it was next week. And then, you know, I remember finishing up with Steve and going, well, that was a, like a lot of fun. And, and Chris didn't say anything because, again, not the role at the time. Mm-hmm. And we we all kind of liked it. And Chris set up this SoundCloud or whatever. And and uh, and off we went. And then overnight, you know, I, I don't I don't know what I was expecting, but I think we got a thousand listens on the first episode overnight, like within eight hours. And you were blown away. I was disappointed. <laughs> I was like, this is amazing. And I thought I, I said to Steve, you know, we, we started to kind of build up, you know, and, and we would do we were doing one a week. That was all we were doing, I think. And then we switched it to two a week at some point. That was down the line. Down the line, like in the fall. But I said to Steve, Jesse, we hit, I remember one day, this was a big day, September, October, and we hit um, something like, no, we hit 5,000 listens wow. in an episode. This is like four months in? Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, Steve, like, this is really cool. Like, I, I, I'm shocked. And... Uh, and then I said, you know, what if, and, and really the, the, the way that we, our show really took off after that first night was we happened to go viral on Tumblr because Steve put them on, Tumblr. put us on Tumblr and a bunch of Penns fans listened in. And that's, we have this connection to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh's one of our top listeners to, to, to this day. To this day. Um, and, uh, and that's why, you know, with the Mark Madden episodes, we were making mm-hmm. fun of that guy in, in, in Pittsburgh. There was a lot of reaction to that cause we got a lot of Penns fans. Yeah. Pittsburgh it, Twitter loves us. It's, I don't know why, <laughs> but we're so lucky. It's amazing. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but then, um, uh, we got to 5,000 and I said, Steve, like, what if one day we hit 20,000? Like what, what, what would that feel like? And Steve was like. We're never, we're never gonna fucking hit. Oh that. gosh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we can do it. Yeah, he didn't even. It was because it, here's the thing. I'm like, when it comes to that stuff, I'm like Mr. Positivity, and Steve's like, it'll never happen. We'll never be successful. <laughs> like, what then, were your LFRs <clears throat> doing at that time? Oh, when the podcast. Well, that's launched. a good question. So that's a very good question. Maybe fifteen. Fifteen thousand. Oh, okay. And they would have been 20? like seven, eight minutes long. They weren't the. the now they're fifteen, twenty minutes long. Yeah, I might have to dial back. That's, <laughs> that's for like game thirty-four of the regular season. Like that's a little much, but you know. We just, but fifteen k, and then I assume you promoted it on there, like you do now, still. Yeah. Not yeah. right away though. Did you do it right away? Did you promote it right away? Like I think it was a little bit before you're like, oh, maybe I should promote my podcast. Um, no, I, th- no? I, th- I think it was pretty quick, but like, like, here's how like just dumb slash pure I am. Like my buddy was like, you know, I watch a lot of YouTubers and they all ask, um, the people who watch their videos to subscribe at the end. Why don't you do that? <laughs> and this was right around that time. And I'm like, uh, I don't know. I think that's kind of corny and whatever. Fine. I'll try it. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> and I'm like, but I thought. <laughs> If they liked it, I wouldn't have to ask. You gotta ask. <laughs> Turns out I was doing it for like six years and people were like, okay. Yeah. And like, <laughs> That's like asking for or expecting a raise without asking for one. I, I really it's should happen. I really should do a breakdown of my year by year by year because the eleven twelve season was my fifth, and I'm pretty sure compared to the fourth, my views had, uh, had gone down. I remember you showing oh, wow. me a line graph in 2017 or 2018. You and I talked about that and did a, like a, we did actually a look at that. And for about three years, you were flat, oh, right? I was, yeah, totally flat. And then for the, number, numbers wise, the content was good, but like, it I was just, so. it was the same amount of people mm-hmm. watching it. You weren't reaching any new audience. Yeah. No. And then the lockout shortened season happened and that's the I podcast was, season too, right at the end. It was the podcast season, but I was, I was shot out of cannon. Because I was so happy to have this back, mm. right? And uh, I think the fans were equally as excited. The Leafs were an exciting team, and I've been riding the momentum ever since. <laughs> <laughs> it never the, stopped. That was eight years ago. Yeah, there are certain games, and one day we'll have to do like a uh, a full look at the rise of like how your channel rose. But oh, I man. think you know there are certain games that really took off. Like I remember the, the one of the things that that was huge on this show at the beginning was the John Michael Lyles got traded to I think the Carolina Hurricanes or the yep. Boston Bruins. First game back in Toronto. We're doing a show as the game is happening. This is what we used to do. We actually used to do podcasts while a Leaf game was on. We Mani- did that up until like the fan studio. A couple of years ago, yeah. yeah. Maniacs that we were. <laughs> it was crazy. Um and uh Why? Why it's I just, know. and Steve got so mad and this is pre Jesse. He said, "Fuck a duck! I hate this team so much." Yeah, and I scream. No, and the other thing about that game is Jake Gardner was a healthy scratch. Oh yeah, this is Randy Carlisle. Dark years. It was, yeah, they had traded Lyles, and Gardner was out of the lineup. Yeah, 
Yeah. But don't worry, Tim Gleason was there. Yeah. Oh God. And so this oh. is this is you know uh, so there were there were moments like that and then moments like the nine two Nashville game, which was the. F- 14, 15 season. Right. Catapulted Steve. And then, therefore, it's funny because Steve told me in 2015 or 2016, I've gone up since this podcast started because I think people who watch Steve got to get to know Steve a little bit better, which was a huge thing. And then as your channel rose, it would bring this, it would bring the podcast up. So they've kind of, it's like stepping, stepping, stepping. They, one will take the other with it. And then once once that one's done making that step, then the next one takes its step. And it's funny how that's they've worked in concert with each other. It's been really great. So anyway, that's the that's the story. I mean, and then Je- yeah, Jesse we brought on because Chris decided he didn't want to do it anymore. And and I I thought Jesse was pretty great, uh, even though he'd said four sentences to me. We'd worked together eight months, and uh, and I thought, man, like this guy this guy gets it and can do it. And I mean, look at where we are now, right? This is all Jesse. So, as I said, uh, it's it. the three of us. Uh, Stop. All right, well. You see this TV stand? Yeah. Stephen Dangle. <laughs> Stephen A. Dangle. <laughs> Me. I did that. So, listen, you know, um, we've got a few minutes left here because, well, we've got actually more than a few minutes because we didn't start till one o'clock. So, we've got like 40 minutes here. Yeah, we're about can you uh, make that? 60 minutes in. Okay. Well, we can we can tighten it up if you need to. Yeah. Um, it's the summer. That's about right. Yeah. I got to pick up Leo's. Yeah. yeah okay. Oh. Well, we, we can let you get out of here. But, but so, I do want to talk some hockey here quickly. Jonathan Drouin has informed coaching staff that he uh, is ready to play center this year. Oh. So that's interesting. In Montreal. In Montreal. 91.9 Sports or whatever. The, the French the French sports channel on radio in Montreal reported that today. And I thought that was interesting given the Kakaniemi offer sheet. Now, we're not going to have any clarity on that, at least for us in this room, until what, Thursday? Is that how long they oh, have? Is it a week to match? At what? least. It's, it is a week, yeah. Why is seven it a, days. First off, it should never be seven days. What are they thinking? Make it three. Make it really hard on them. Oh, you, uh, in the rules. So Yeah, to match. and uh, right. to match a. They want the team to have the option to explore all avenues. So you want them to be able to call all the GMs to seek out trades and see what the salary cap is. So seven days is kind yeah, of but, but from a Yeah, but from a completely competitive standpoint, fuck the teams, am I right? <laughs> so Like, let's just go for it. Maximum chaos. Well, also, like, so the Habs, I, I believe, cannot afford to go into the season. If they were to match, they can't afford to go into the season like this. Mm-hmm. They'd be over. What a what a what a shorter turnover or a shorter window to match would do is shaft teams who are, you know, over the cap in the summer, like a Tampa or like a Montreal. So I don't know. I actually kind of like it. Yeah, a little bit. yeah but because you, you want to encourage. But then these. nobody's gonna do it. Because then the GM's going to be like, oh, you screwed me two years ago. Here's an exact copy. Well, of nobody's what doing you it said. anyway. Great. So Waddell is the only guy who's done it. Right. Right, like him and him and what Kevin Lowe, like that's it. No, there was a Van, the Vancouver Canucks and the St. Louis Blues traded offer sheets. It was I think it was David Backus and Steve Bernier. Okay, but that, how long ago was that? It was quite some <laughs> time <laughs> ago. So if we're worried about teams not doing this, don't worry, they're already not doing it. Yeah, that's right. true. Right, and uh, you know it's funny. Sarah Sivian of the Athletic uh, tweeted out. She's like, I we're trying to reach Don Waddell for comment on this, but he's literally at the rodeo right now. What so we, he's at a rodeo, like, like John Dutton. Yeah, literally like like Yellowstone, Yellow- <laughs> and and he's at a rodeo. So we can't reach him at the moment. We're gonna have to wait a couple hours till the rodeo is done. <laughs> Don Waddell, <laughs> I know he he does some weird shit, and I think that has to do with what the ownership group wants. But Don Waddell is kind of a G. Like I I, I love the way he's handling that. I'm, I, I'm so upset. What are you guys upset about, Adam? Don, what a perfect opportunity. To just respond, Sarah, this ain't my first rodeo. And he didn't? I don't well, we don't know. We could always ask her, but I don't know if he's if he responded. That I way. am furious. <laughs> <laughs> no. So I, I'm curious about this situation. Because what's interesting about Cock and Yemi and Druan mm-hmm. is if you have Druan under contract already, he wasn't, you know, a part of things last year. Obviously, he he took some time for his health, and that's great. So you have him coming back. At $5 million, I believe, he makes. If Druan comes back and he can play center, your need for Kock and Niemi is almost... I drops. mean, you, It drops. The hole that you're going to have to fill is filled to no. But, the, but they couldn't afford him anyway at that price. Or at least they said they couldn't. Although I think they had a comparable offer or something on the table. There was something that swung them down. It was not far off. It wasn't far off. 
so they would have made other moves to keep Philip Deneau. You know, Kaki Niemi, if you get if you have Druin playing center or at least have Druin as a shot at taking center, I don't think you need to bother matching Kaki Niemi because he, the thing about this, and Jesse, you brought this up. We were talking about this a couple days ago. I don't think they should do it anyway. But. Well, okay, so Carolina signs him. Mm-hmm. What's what are the what's the ramifications of that? Because so, there's a couple things. Yeah, the six point one is important because if Montreal says okay, we'll keep him, we'll sign him to the six point one. That means the qualifying offer they offer uh, Kaki Niemi next season has to be at least six point one. But if Carolina gets him at this number this year, they can negotiate a new deal that's less than that. And they so, can start that extension talk in January? Yes. And Montreal can't trade him at all this season for, I think, for this entire season until if next off. If they match, they can't trade him? They can't trade him what? during the season. For a year. For, Why? For one year. You Why? Can't, you can't trade a player. You, uh, you, get the, uh, you sign the offer sheet to for one year. That's the rule. He gets an automatic no move? Uh, yeah, essentially, yeah. For, Why? This, it's, it's, for this one year, yeah. I don't and understand. It's not even that, like though. he could waive the normal. You just can't trade. It's, it's the rules. But that's a dumb rule. Why does that exist? Sorry, you're, I'm not I'm you're, asking you're the wrong guy. To, sorry, but I, I assume you're trying to call Brandon Pridham. What the hell? Man? Discourage teams from matching the offer sheet. You know, you 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 want Montreal to be like, no, there's too many things going on. We got to sign him to six point one. Mm-hmm. We can't trade him. So you want them to be like, okay, here you go, Carolina. So Dom Lecision had him at like, you know, because he's twenty. We forget he's twenty. Man. Yeah, he could projection wise be a, a a lesser number number one center, and I and I say lesser number one as in oh, if you're number one center in the NHL. You're pretty you're still pretty good, but in like the future. he could be like a what a Matt Duchesne is not a lit, not your Austin Matthews or your Barkov or your, you know what I mean like the best best Connor McDavid obviously not, um, but you know the best Jonathan Tays you know all of those guys that are like the legitimate number one centers he might be on the lower end of that. Or, more likely, he could be like a third-line guy at the end of this. That's what they're saying. If Carolina gets him at $6 million this year, which they can absolutely afford because God knows they did some crazy cap stuff. Well, and lost Dougie Hamilton. And lost Dougie Hamilton. You then... Well, yeah, if you can, if you can play... If you can pay Cock and EME 6, you can't, play, you can't pay Hamilton 9? Uh, listen, it's... A, that's a really good. That's point. a question a lot of people on Twitter were asking. Yes, yeah. a lot of their decisions have been quite. And the confusing. goalie they traded to Detroit, Nedeljkovic. Yeah, you're, like, but your they got money for this. Coaches had to beg to get paid. Yeah, but they got money for this. But they got money to just be like, "Hey, here's a meme." Because it's Dundon. Here's it meme. all comes from Dundon, and yeah. the rumor is like he was personally affronted by the Aho offer sheet. So this is him basically going in. Eh, Screw but does he you. understand what Cocky Niemi is, and does that benefit the Canes? Well, I I assume <laughs> I'm not saying that he's bad, <laughs> yeah. but like they did scratch him in the Stanley Cup. I right. assume his management team has at least enough sway to be like, actually, that's stupid, Tom. Mm-hmm. Um, but they have organized this in a way that makes it smart enough. They're giving up a first and a third instead of a, what is what would what's the one up a first, a second, and a third. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. they're just at the limit of the first and the third. Yeah, and as. Elliot Friedman pointed out on the 31 Thoughts podcast something very smart. They would have already had extension talks. Like, or they would know what his long term number is. If you wanted him at eight years Mm -hmm. or six years or whatever. Right. And it's going to be less than the 6.1. So it'd be like three or four million, maybe. I assume. Uh, Potentially. Potentially less, less than six. If you can get a, if you can get a three C now at four million, that's going to be worth a lot of money towards the end of the contract, especially if he's twenty or twenty one. What about a, a contract like Nazem Kadri's when he signed it with the Leafs? The Bingo. Four point five. Six times four point five. Yeah. It's it's not wild. It's not wild, and and Kadri was coming off a pretty dog shit season uh, uh, in terms of goal scoring and. I also think. There are certain players that just don't work under certain coaches. And like, you know, you look at what happened with Thomas Tatar under Gerard Gallant. Yeah. Like what a what yeah. a waste that was, right? Especially when, you know, what they ended up trading, like Suzuki and Tatar. Like like yeah. they Tatar was like, please take him. It wasn't a Oh, he you know, was a dump. Yeah. So it was a cap dump. Um, but you know, maybe Cock and Yemi and, and Dom Ducharme are just not compatible. Like it seems I like, thought he played well. I okay. yeah. now I said that, yeah. I said the same thing. In the Stanley Cup final, I was all over Ducharme about scratching him because I don't think Eric Stahl was any better. No. Not no, even close. No, he was not good. Like, he wasn't... I, I know everybody loves Eric Stahl. I do too. But he's not He's not even two years ago Minnesota Wild Eric Stahl. No. 
I understood the role. He he had a couple shining moments, but no. Okay. No. So this will be very, very fascinating. And if if Drew Ann is going is ready to play center, I mean this it's perfect timing that this would come out. And there are sometimes, not because I don't want the francophone heritage, but there's sometimes where I wish you know Montreal and Quebec all spoke English or we all spoke speak French because there's so much gossip there that I is know. in the French language. It just yeah. disappears in English. Like imagine Toronto, the same sort of situation. We have our second line center who's 20 years old, offer sheeted. And then this guy who hasn't been a part of the team for a while, missed the Stanley Cup run, says, I can play center. Like, that is chatter. You could talk about that. And you remind me of a, of a hockey Twitter phenomenon that drives me absolutely nuts. Is someone from, like, TVA Sport or something will tweet, tweet something. Mm -hmm. And someone in English will quote tweet it with, wow. <laughs> Yo, our buddy Julian McKenzie like read the French thing, and that's how I saw it. it was that's how I saw the tweet? Is Julian's Twitter account? Yeah. He retweeted, and he's like, "Well, wh why does he feel that way?" or something like that. <laughs> I was like, "I," and then I had to like click the tweet, click translate. Like, I don't. Right. I have grade nine French, man. I, I know how to conjugate a couple <laughs> yeah. verbs. Like, that's it. Can you believe this? Well, okay. So first, <laughs> first, let's see if the tweet contains the word fromage. It doesn't. Okay, okay. so I'm I'm travaille, um, which is work. That's work. That's work. I can do that. And that's where, like, thank God for Renaud Lavoie, who can, yep. who can tweet in both languages. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, and sometimes the translation even then is still a little lost. Yeah, but Pierre Lebrun with the quote tweet and just, oh, the plot thickens. <laughs> 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 and I'm like, does it? Does it, Pierre? Yeah, yo, how come no one talks to them about that? Do, do these people not have bosses that go, hey, you know, you have an audience? Maybe it's a, maybe the way people from Saskatchewan all wear Rough Rider stuff everywhere. Maybe that's their inside joke. Mm -hmm. Oh. There it is. Could be. I, you know what? LeBron is a guy that we've never had on. I'd love to have him on. I don't know if you know him. I know you drank beers with him once. Champagne. Champagne. Oh, oh champagne. Fancy. I don't know if I know that one. Was it from the Champagne region of France? Uh, I hope so. Mm. I don't care. He paid for it. He just wrote. <laughs> <so. Yeah. laughs> that was good. The bottle was in French. The bottle was in French. And he just said, this is good. And yeah. I'll tell you, I don't know what it is, but it's good. <laughs> Drink this. <laughs> exactly. So, so, I mean, I know it's probably been a while, but I'd love to have Pierre on. We can, we can bring that up to him. Well, there's some, there's a few guests I'm, I'm working on thinking about. Actually. Oh. Okay. What? So we got the hockey guy coming on. Mm. There are other guests coming on later in, in, in September too, which is going to be September right now. It feels like a fever dream. Like it's a little like far away. Not eh, it's whatever. It's tomorrow. It's tomorrow. <laughs> Wake and, me up when it ends. I say, uh, oh, uh, and I wonder, I, I don't know if you realize how quickly this is all going to ramp up. Like we have got some big plans for September, which we're very excited about that. We can't talk about yet. And then like things are going to, and then, and then the season's back mm -hmm. like that. And I wonder how many, first off, by June next year, everybody's going to be super grumpy. I'm just throwing that out there. No matter what happens, if the Leafs win the cup, everybody's going to be super grumpy. The short off season, you're not going to see it now. You're going to see it next spring. Yeah. Short off season, 82 game season, Olympics, all star break, which oh never happens. Why are they doing the all star break and the Olympics? I'm going to die. We're going to die. Because they got to, da -na 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 -na. <laughs> they got to put on the full shit. They. <laughs> All the revenue, here we go. Patches on the jersey, give me that. On the helmet, give me that yeah. too. They they gotta. Now, um, on that, on that, because we haven't had the chance to talk about that. What, over the break, um, obviously it was announced that there will be patches on the jerseys with ads. I think start, is it next year or is it this year? I think it's the following season. Yeah, it's not this Not season. this year, it's, it's next the next year. one, yeah. And we're still going to have the helmet ads for the of next, course. at least, I think it's five to eight. Oh, I forget the deal. Yeah. Well, what's not my money. what is absolutely hysterical is that anybody thought that those are ever going away. They're not. No. But the other thing is, what again, we, we see the reaction from people. And it's like, I got, I got messages from people who listen to the show who were just mortified that they're dared to be advertising. And I'm like, okay, I can understand and respect the viewpoint. However, every other sport, like, have you seen... If, if we start looking like the Austrian jerseys with Zepter and then like 40 different ads down the side, fair. The referees dress like a cow. Yeah, I think, fair enough. But it's not going to look like that. And those teams are from smaller markets where hockey is not the dominant sport, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I was watching the Champions Hockey League and I had a terrible loss on a bet because I put money on the Munich Red Bulls. And they were up, I think, three, uh, four to three with 30 seconds left. 
And uh, the team they're playing is some European country, I forget. They, they score to tie it. And then on the ensuing 15 seconds, oh, no. uh, they went down the ice. It was a breakaway. He got a tripping penalty. It was a penalty shot. And the other team won 5-4. to four. No! But the reason I bring that up is because the team was called the Munich Red Bulls. Right. The team is, name is literally an advertisement. And, and in, the, in Bundesliga, there's Red Bull Leipzig, which is yeah. literally a Red Bull-founded team. Yeah. In Leipzig, and we and we talk about F one all the time. The teams are just named after the advertising for the car. Yes. Wait, like, wait, wait. The, they're Aston Martin. Yeah, like, we're, we're wait, team wait. Aston Martin. We're Je- team Williams uh, uh, and, and all the uh, Lavazza and, and like. There's a million ads on every other sport. It's the last one, Jesse. Yes. You, you bet on the European <laughs> CHL. I love you, Champions Hockey League. Love I threw you. a little, threw a little money on the Munich Red Bulls because I thought it'd be fun. It, it's live streamed on YouTube. You just watch all the games, and it's the middle of summer, so why not? Yeah, do, I love do that you, you did that. first of all? <laughs> why not? I love that you but did that. Do you want to talk? Like, <laughs> do I do I need to go to counseling? Yo, since you, yeah, since you, you right? left Virgin Radio, like you got a lot of time, eh? I got a lot of time. <laughs> not for long. Uh, <laughs> Things about to wrap up. It's about to yeah. get crazy. So he's enjoying his time. <laughs> Um, Adam hey, doing let, his morning show. Jesse is watching. Let me watch the Munich European Red Bulls. CHL. <laughs> All right. All right. It was a great game. I, love it. I just got screwed. Oh, yeah. European yeah. hockey's awesome. Can we? Uh, uh, so, where were we going with this? Uh, uh, the advertising. Sorry. The advertising. <laughs> Listen, I know for some people that this is really hard, but this is where it's going, and I, you really shouldn't be offended by it, um, because at the end of the day, you won't be offended by it. Um, you know, the helmet ads, everybody made a huge kerfuffle about that last year. And what did it change? What Do you I, love I, hockey or do you love the – like, I, I love the Leafs jersey too. Yeah. And you can buy one now without it, without a thing and you can keep it forever and that's great. Or you can just say, well, uh, honestly, what is the Toronto Maple Leaf if it's not a brand? It's also a logo. It's, all, it's just like everything else and it doesn't – yes. I got it on my coffee cup right here that is full of water. There's nothing wrong with ads. There's nothing wrong with ads. Right. In fact, the more money the owners make, the less that the players are going to have to pay them back, the higher the salary cap goes. You should be pro this. If you're pro player, if you're pro players making what they deserve, then you should be pro ads on jerseys 100,000%. I'm, I'm going to say uh, you got your helmet. You got your one small jersey Patch. one. I think that's enough. You know I'm with I mean? you on that. I think that's are you yeah. ag- Are you against it becoming European hockey? Hmm. Yeah, kind of. Like okay. I, I'm against it looking ridiculous. I see. I I wouldn't even hate if it was like English or football in the rest of the world, where it's just a logo on the chest. Yeah, just a, an ad on the chest. Like I'll I'll cheer for the Jeep Juventus. I, I yeah. I, it's it's difficult as a North American because I remember seeing Manchester United and being like, "Who's Vodafone? Mm-hmm. <laughs> what's, Which, oh, what the city players, is that? The players wear their name on the front here. Yeah. But if you is it, Vodafone the captain, <laughs> if they did it for long enough here in North America, people just get used to you it. You just do. And, yeah, you know. I yeah. have I have a friend that did sales for um the span. What's the Spanish uh, soccer league called? Uh, the uh, uh, Ronald. Uh, hold on, hold on. Uh, Daniel Ricardo. Spain. Oh my God, why is this? Uh, the La Liga. Christian La Liga. Aldo For God's sakes, La Liga. Um, yeah, really, it was like it was Ronaldo Messi. Essentially, is what it was. For I years. was trying to think of that dude who now was on the Raptors them a few years ago. Uh, Andrea Bargnani. He's no, Italian. He's Italian. Oh, Bruno uh, Caboclo. No, 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 no. Calderon. Luis Scola. <laughs> really? Jose Calderon's also Scottish. Cal- yes. yeah. yeah, Calderon would have been the guy. Scola? <laughs> Scola because I just, I love Luis Scola because he looks truly ridiculous. <laughs> okay. Like just the way he moves and he's still playing and, yeah. and looks amazing. Yeah, he does great. He's doing great. No, somehow. Yeah. Um, so La Liga, I had I a friend, just a kick out a of friend who did Scola. sales in La Liga and they were ta- he was telling me about the, um, the fact that they'll sell a patch on, you know, say it's like Real Madrid. They'll sell a patch on Real Madrid's jersey, right? And it's worth hundreds of millions of dollars or whatever. Oh, yeah. Then, because, you know, a, a club team like that is so big, um, they will sell practice patch jerseys different. So let's say Chevrolet oh, buys the Real Madrid cover like they did in Manchester. Ford could come in and buy their practice jerseys. Wow. And you can make the argument in soccer that that might be worth more because they're practicing more necessary like than they're playing. And a lot of the time it's not it's not that, you know, obviously in the game you're going to get a lot more whatever. 
but the news coverage is often them in their practice gear. Interesting. And so it's worth a ton of money. So it'd be interesting to see. I wouldn't have a problem if they have like the Taco Bell, McDonald's, Toronto Maple Leaf practice jersey or whatever. I don't care. Pump up the pump up the revenue, guys. Whatever you want to do to make money, who cares? It's a practice jersey. And we do lots of we, – we see lots of coverage with the Leafs in their practice jerseys, right? Yeah. So why not? I, I, I That's – you know, and I, and remember too, if you're if you're mad about the patch on the jersey, you were probably mad about the helmet, and you your grandfather was probably mad about uh, the, the forward the, pass. The for, no, probably mad about <laughs> uh, the boards getting advertising. Oh yeah. Oh wow. You know and the ice. The ice getting advertising, right? <laughs> and now they they now it's cool. Like when we were with um, Panago for all those years, they used to buy Hockey Night in Canada ads. And you would see them come up on like the Western games and they would be on the glass and, and we'd always be like, how the hell did they see? And it's like, oh, they computerize that image yeah. and it just sits there. So a lot of times in baseball, they'll switch out the image that's computerized on the, on the actual field, but it's not, the, it's not actually there, which is kind of the NBA too. started doing that uh, for the bubble season as well. Really? So, yeah. On, on the, the court. On the courts. Yeah. And then all last season, like on the courts, I think four of the ads there aren't actually there. Like you wouldn't see them in real life, but they're just computerized for the TV. Which broadcast. is also way better for the environment stuff because you're not painting things and you're oh, not yeah. like switching it out and changing wood and all that. Well, it helped the cap go up. <laughs> I mean, I think that's a question for Frank, Frank Ciravalli who we should have on, but um, mm. my assumption would be, yeah, because they have to, the players and owners, it. the players owners <laughs> split 50, 50, right? Yep. For it. Great. You're for it. For it. I'm not, I'm not again it. I'm for it. <laughs> so yeah, just, you know, I, I know for some people that's like, there's a sanctity of the Jersey. If you're a Toronto Maple Leaf fan there, I love you, but there's no sanctity in the Jersey. <laughs> like we, you know, we're talking about a team that changed its Jersey just because the owner said, you know, that's the last guy's Jersey, right? Like that's what Harold Ballard did. We only changed jerseys in 67 because, or 68 or whatever it was because Harold Ballard said, eh, fuck the Smythe family. I'm doing what I want. That's literally the only reason, right? So you, you got to remember that the game is changing. You want the owners to make some money so that the players can make some money too. Just throwing that out there. It's really important. Throw it out there, Adam. Now, is there anything else that we need to hit before we wrap up, wrap up today? Jesse, was One thing. Uh, yeah. Can we do a press conference? Oh, hell yes. yeah. We've so. The Presser SDP. The Steve Dangle Press Conference. Girl. <laughs> wow, man. I, I've never heard that properly through my headphones that was loud that i i heard that in my nipples that was- <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna blast it even louder now Woo! so the press conference uh we had to get to because it's a special announcement uh oh, yeah. over the last two and a half weeks ish we've been building something something special for the community of uh sdpn listeners and enjoyers of the programs on this network so we now have a discord server So a a dear friend of the show, Robert Malloy, helped me set this up. This is where you'll be able to connect with people who are also fans of of sports or the shows that we have and just the podcast in general. And you'll go there and it's not it's not a hockey discord. It's not even we go outside of sports as well. It's just whatever you enjoy, you'll be able to find people who also enjoy your little hobbies there. You'll be able to talk about whatever you want. And also there is where I'm going to be hosting the press conference uh, thread. So oh, there's a channel there amazing. where you can all talk with everybody. And there's a, there's a channel there. You can see the press conference uh, channel right there, Steve. You can go through it and you can pick a question you want to answer today. Uh, oh. We all have, we are all commissioners on the server. I will show you how to use Discord, Adam. Yeah, just because I don't know if anything about <laughs> Discord. Like, what do I need to know? I'll, I'll show you how to get on there and interact with everybody. But yeah, this is where you'll see uh, reactions to the podcast, what people are thinking, suggestions for the show. Uh, I'll do merch announcements there. Everything you need to know oh, about so, SDPN. So the next round of jerseys, and by the way, they're coming at mm-hmm, some point. Mm-hmm. That will happen on Discord? Or what, yeah, how will that we'll, happen? We'll, we'll do it in, co- in combination with everything, but... You'll get a lot of exclusive before things are happening. I'll just be in there chatting with you guys. I also suge- would suggest to you that if you're not already on the sdpn.ca newsletter, mm-hmm. uh, or at least email list, make sure that you are. Because the, the reason that a lot of people missed out on those jerseys uh, or, or any merch drop and things sell out is because the first people to find out are the people that get an email directly to them. All right. And you'll also go to sdpn.ca to find a link to the Discord server. Oh, perfect. So if you go to the homepage, there's an update. It says uh, 
connect with the community. You click that, and then you'll get a link directly to the server. That in, does never expires. In all the things you learned how to do, like build an entire website, I don't think was mentioned. Oh yeah, earlier. yeah, so, yeah, so, yeah. I, I think we should quickly say that that we came back I think after I threw that in there. After, oh, you did oh, after okay, Christmas. Right. Jesse just came to us and said, "Hey guys, I built a website." <laughs> yeah, and we were like, "I'm building." I here it is. And we were like, "What?" And he's like, "Yeah, it's done." It's fairly simple. Like it's yeah. it's only a landing page for a bunch of our stuff. But yeah, I had I had those two weeks because we couldn't go anywhere, and it was annoying. Because Christmas is usually time where like oh you go around you see a bunch of family. I'm like okay, I get to sit at home for two weeks, right? Not doing a radio show, and then we now have the podcast. So yeah, I built a website. So go to our disco, go to that website sdpn.ca, find the link to the Discord server, uh, join the community. We had for everybody who was there for the. Uh, beta test i called it because i launched it on our twitch channel i told everybody about it there and then everybody who got to use it over the last uh two weeks or so it was about 200 users i think we passed oh. uh they got the beta test uh, role oh, on sick. their profile so they for the rest of the time the server's alive they'll have a little dot on your profile that says i was part of the beta tester so thank you guys huh. for uh talking so you're joining. a beta cuck <laughs> That's what you are. <laughs> beta tester? Beta test. <laughs> Liberal. Anyway. But yeah, every, connect with us there. This is the official official law. Steve, do you have anything in the uh, press conference uh, questions channel that you want to talk about? Well, by the looks of it, the most popular one, right? Because mm -hmm. people pointed up at that. They said this one. Yeah. Right so it's here. like Reddit in that way. You kind of can upvote things. It's more of like a forum. Oh, cool. Yeah. The simplest way to describe Discord, if you haven't used it, it's just a forum. Okay. You know, there's a forum and there's a bunch of different threads and topics and you discuss everything on our forum. Uh, so from Ali name tags, does Carolina really think their bunch of jerks persona is still cute considering their off season acquisition? Uh, uh, refer Tony D'Angelo referring to Tony D'Angelo. And I mean, we have already discussed at length why that that signing sucks. Um, I'm sure they still do, and they're going to use it in marketing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? They're, they're going to use it, but like they, uh, apart from making the wrong decision, I don't care how good or bad he plays. Apart from making the wrong decision, they lost something when they did that. Does that make sense? Hmm. Yep. Yeah. And I also think um, it, the bunch of jerks thing, from as an outsider and Carolina Hurricanes fans, you can correct me on this one. But like that was like 2018, 2019. You know, the We the North thing, I mean, has lasted for sure in Toronto, but oftentimes slogans get a little tired. And at a certain point, they're not a bunch of jerks anymore. They're actually a very, very good hockey team with high expectations. So, you know, it's remember they the Sens in the 15 playoffs were like the pesky Sens or whatever they are, those pesky Sens. Pesky are, stars. Yeah. Pesky everybody. But like, yeah. but the bunch of jerks thing, I, I don't know. Like how much, how much more in the, in the way, like that marketing legs does it have? Don Cherry. Don right? Cherry. And it would be 2019. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was one of his probably one of his last hockey night in Canada. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's just it 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 heavily relies on being likable, and they did an extremely unlikable thing. Right, <laughs> and people aren't ready to to some people. Yeah, and yeah. I would also say that I'm sure they're relying on the team being very good to so people get over that. That's what they're that's their ploy here. It, that's nothing, their play. Nothing helps people forget more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what for, else you got? For Steve, if you were able to channel your amazing Leaf slash hockey memory slash brain power, that's that's enough slashes there, uh, into something else, what would you use it for? And that's from Arkel the Great. Um, I like to be able to do all the things that Jesse does. Probably. <laughs> no, because, Man, I like, would have seen like bit, Bitcoin investing or something you can make a no, of money. No, I on. love crypto. Crypto's awesome. Can you help me with that? Because really? yeah, I would like yeah. to learn that. Crypto's cool. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm crypto, sure you'll learn that. Crypto's cool, man. Crypto is cool. Yeah, I'll be like, I don't understand it. And you're like the Peter Griffin meme where you're, you know, you got a monocle and like a full tuxedo and everything. In a no, case. but if, I think they're asking like if you, if your YouTube channel wasn't this, what would it be? Oh, you know, like what would you channel? What Everything. could you be good at? Because you're a, you're a wizard with this hockey knowledge. So what are you going to turn that wizardry into? Uh, I don't know. I was always sort of like that with the hockey, like writing lineups on the so, receipt paper at the zoo. But it would probably be something in, involved with, with the zoo. What if? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> really? To be honest. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, because I started working there before I started the YouTube channel. I yeah, started yeah. there in 2005. So would, would you would say that that's your second passion? <laughs> like, mm, I do really like history. So I would like to, I'd be like to transfer it to something that Adam literally already does. Which is uh, what? History. I don't do a history. No, but you remember everything. Oh, okay. Well. You, like, it's one thing to listen to all these 
you know, history podcasts and read all these books and articles and everything, you retain it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and, and I don't know why. It's not really useful. Yeah. Like, I read the like, technology stuff. I do not retain it. No, <laughs> same. Same. It's... Yeah. it's I it's I Jesse was talking about, like, loving to new, learn new programs and pull all this shit together. I'm like, that sounds like my personal hell. Like, I, there's <laughs> yeah. no way I would want to do that. Yeah. It's not me. Um, uh, I think, too, to, to change that question just a little bit, if there was something you, you wish that you were actually, like, really good at, like, so if you were to take the hockey version of Steve and make it about a different subject, yeah, yeah. not the zoo. Not something that you have well, direct experience animals. with. Animals. I mean, not... No, no, like, but like, it, it would be animals? Uh, if you could just a good you could snap your fingers and all of a sudden you have all of the hockey knowledge, but in whatever else you want. What anything. You anything at yeah. all. Space. Okay. Oh, that's you a good You want to be one. space guy. I like space. You want to be space. Neil deGrasse Tyson? No. <laughs> <laughs> more, more along the lines of Chris Hatfield. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Singing in space. He's an astronaut, you see. Mm -hmm. See, yeah. <laughs> there's one space thing I know. Not a natural physicist. No, no, no. Um, I tried to listen to some theoretical physics stuff, and I was like, that's that's too much for me. But no, outer space is wild to me. And, and any time there's a... Whenever there's a deep sea discovery or an outer space discovery, Man, I'm all over that. Crazy. Love deep sea. Yeah. Love deep sea stuff. Any more? I like nature. Any other questions? Anything you got? Uh, here, Jesse, you you Jesse, you be the guy. One. You right, be the moderator. I actually, that's how bad my vision is. I can't read it without glasses, like without leaving the microphone. Uh, t t I don't think we can do this uh, off the top of our brains unless we're Steve Dangle. But mystical Rhino wrote, "If you were able to build a full lease lineup made oh. up of the best players over the last forty years, oh. who would you play, and how many members of the current roster would make the team?" Can we save that as a topic for the next episode? Because yeah. I would love to build that. But that's yeah. that's like. That's a lot to do in a press conference, right? We could take a whole segment outside of the press conference to do that. It'd be a half an hour segment. Here's the tease. Um, we did this on the LeafsNation.com years ago. And the big controversy around that is Wendell Clark did not make the team. Oh! Yeah. Probably the right call. Uh, depends who you ask, Jesse. That's a conversation for another day. When, uh, the, when Mystical Rhino writes lineup, I'm thinking you get five guys. Or six, if you got the goalie. Oh, no, that. no. We did four lines. Oh, you did four lines. Okay. <laughs> we did four lines. I was thinking just pairs. starters. Nope. Okay. I'm okay. looking forward to my all-Swede Janssen Salming pairing. <laughs> I think that'd be great. Kenny Janssen. Oh, and... Kenny. I was like, what? no, 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 no. Kenny I'm going to tell you right now, if it's a full lineup, Phil Kessel makes my team. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I think Kessel was on Kessel's a top. Yeah. He might be a top 10 player skill-wise. Yeah. I'm There's... not saying... There's a lot to unpack. There's an argument to be made there, right? This is good. We should do this. Yeah. Yes, there's a lot. There's a lot Matthews there. is the first line center. Obviously. Oh, boy. There's a lot there. There's in, a in lot there. Over mats. Bro, over mats. I love, I love Dave Keon, but Dave Keon is not the number one guy on that team. Dave Keon is number one in our hearts, but he's not the number one guy on the team. There's a lot there. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> That's good. All right. All right. And last question, Jess. Do we have one that more? That was it. That That's was it? it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, listen. Thanks so much for joining us in our brand new studio. And we're going to be doing this uh, three times a week starting when the season starts. So in the meantime, you can look out for episodes Tuesdays and Thursdays. I was like, what the hell is going on in my headphones? Jesse just ran You got to hit the post. Well, uh, hit, the post hit the post, Adam. Hit the post. Shit, we're not there yet. No, you didn't. I thought we were going to scream out. Shut up. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Follow the guys on Twitter. Steve underscore Dangle at Adam W-Y-L-D-E and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.